Hi guys, welcome back to the next video. I uh, appreciate you guys coming back. Um, we're just going to start this video off with such a beautiful face. Uh, this is the last painting of the Lord Jesus Christ that uh, a cane um, has completed. Um, if you notice, this one kind of looks very similar to the other painting of Jesus um, that she painted, and she actually had someone sitting for her at that time. And this one uh, was completely from uh, her closing her eyes and being guided. So um, just wanted to share that with you and keep that in mind. Um, we have him watching over us at all times. Okay, guys, so uh, this is going to be the third installment of the They Are Coming uh, expansion of the, the video from last year. And, um, and I wanted to go into um, a couple of things um, to show you where the Lord led me in my studies um, to gather a, a bit more of a complete understanding as to what is coming. Um, so with that, um, I want to remind you that the Lord in all of these messages kept calling them things. And, uh, and I found that to be very, very interesting. Now, I've gone through to, um, to create some type of a uh, table so that we can take a look at a few things. And here is what I have uh, just kind of very quickly put together for the video so that we can um, take a look at uh, some of the information. Now, I started only, and I only included the messages that we have already discussed and identified in uh, previous uh, videos. Um, so I started with the message from last year and just kind of took out some of the information um, that he gave in the message. He said they are coming, uh, warned, we've been warned that they're coming for years now. Great, it's going to be a great and tumultuous time, a day to be reckoned with, allowed by his hand to show the world his protection is needed. A great calamity allowed by his hand. This, this I wanna, I wanna highlight right here. Uh, let me do that. Allowed by his hand to show the world uh, his protection is needed, great calamity. Uh, it strikes non-discriminate and non-decisive as to who it strikes, um, and calamity just comes, bam. Um, we are told in, in for protection that it can be afforded, uh, but we need to pray. We need to remain on our knees in prayer for such. Uh, we've been told many times in Scripture um, to humble ourselves and pray. Um, he shall tug at the heartstrings of many who will listen and heed the call. He's been calling out for his children for some time. Heed my warnings to you this day. That's what he's telling us for our protection. Hold fast to him. Do not stray to the left or the right to focus upon me and hear my words of instruction. He's also said, watch the skies and watch and see for what I say to you is true. Sorry about the noise guys. I've got I've got family members living in this house and sometimes they can be kind of loud. Okay, so let's go ahead and continue. Promises. Uh, the promises that he said in this particular message are, I have not left you. I will stand with you forevermore and I shall carry you through. And he also said in this particular message, many will be seen fleeing for the hills and the mountains. Many will be released into my hands. Many will be shown the way. Many will be taken out of harm's way. Um, my shoulders bear the strength of all these things and shall lead my children unto safety. So I've kind of broken them out what, uh, into three little categories as best as I could. I mean, uh, you know, some things just kind of flow in together. Um, so let's just continue down. So on the May 15th message, he goes in and says, this day is significant, one many will remember. Um, the promise, the protection was, shake not your faith in me, falter not in your way, so continue to, to remain steadfast in him. 
And his promise here was, I will remain true to my word and stand with you in all things. I shall bring you through these things. So again, he keeps telling us he's going to get us through. He's going to get us through. I'm going to pull these up just a little bit more so you guys can see. And this is the last part here, the June 5th one. Um, this is the time where he was talking about open prey. Um, please go and define the word pray. I read it to you in the last message, but uh, I'm telling you the definitions of that is eye opening. Okay. Uh, but the things that are coming forth, he told us, are from the very beginning. And again, to remind the people of the earth that they were here before, as in the days of Noah, it shall be again. Things, he calls them things. Remember, they're not people, not animals. They're things. They have no, he's, this is, okay. Let me clarify this. This right here, this was what I was understanding um, when the Lord was giving me the message. This is what my spirit was being downloaded. This is what I was understanding that was going on. Okay, He calls them things, not people, not animals, things, no soul, no spirit of God, void of any good, things, emotionless, will harm without any thought things okay so that right there I just want to make note this is what this is what I was understanding while he was giving me the message um, everything else is what he said specifically um, now here they will not bother those that are marked um, that's what we are that's what we are told uh, we were told in that message if you want to go back and listen to it in the last video um, those chosen of God and marked, already marked, will go out helping to get others sealed for their protection. Um, and so that is kind of the promise, too, that that is what he's going to do. Um, and so um, I just wanted to go ahead and bring this to your attention and show you a couple of things in here. And what's highlighted in here um, is what I really want to show you um, through a particular scripture. So as you can see here, I have pulled up uh, Revelation 9. I have had quite a few people come back to me and say, you know, that really does sound like uh, the locusts coming out of the pit. Um, and it really does sound like the locusts coming out of the pit. Um, and so I wanted to go ahead and pull up this particular um, chapter uh, just to go over it a little bit to show you some of the similarities that are actually in this particular uh, Revelation 9 and um, what the Lord has given me in little bits and pieces over time. So it's speaking of the fifth trumpet, the locust coming out from the bottomless pit. And so let's just go ahead and read uh, the part of it. Um, then the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fallen from heaven to the earth. And to him was given the key to the bottomless pit. Okay, so let's let's just talk about this. To him was given the key to the bottomless pit. So um, who gave the key uh, to the angel uh, for the bottomless pit? Now this is something um, that I want to... Um, that I want to show you. Hang on just a moment. We're going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and just open up another here. See if I can bring this a little bit bigger. Okay, so we're in Revelation 1 and um, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God, which God gave him to show his servants. Oh, let me try and know. Why is this not opening? Hang on. It's just trying to be difficult, naturally. Well, let's just bring this smaller then. Okay. Uh, let's go down to 118. So Revelation 1.18, I am he who lives, oh, let's come back here, um, so something fell in front of John, and John is trying to identify what it looks like, he's trying to explain, and he said, and his countenance was like the sun shining, and in its strength, 
uh, in its strength. And, uh, and when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. But he laid his right hand on me, saying, saying to me, Do not be afraid, for I am the first and the last. I am he who lives and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Okay, so we know that this is the Lord Jesus Christ that's in front of him. And I have the keys of Hades and death. Okay. All right. And I have the keys uh, of Hades and death. So who has given him the key? Who has given the angel the key? Well, that would have to be the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. And we said in this, <coughs> we said in this, that this was allowed by his hand, right? So if he's got the key, then it was allowed by his hand, right? Okay. And to him was given the key to the bottomless pit, and he opened the bottomless pit, and smoke arose out of the pit like the smoke of a great furnace, okay? So the sun and the air were darkened because of the smoke of the pit. And so my question here is, if the sun and the air are darkened, are we talking about the days of darkness? Um, that's just a question that I'm posing to you. Um, I would like for you to seek the Lord on that. Then out of the smoke, locusts came upon the earth, and to them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. They were commanded not to harm the grass of the earth or any green thing or any tree, but only those men who do not have the seal on their forehead. Okay, so locusts. So what I did is I pulled up um, the um, Blue Letter Bible. What is going on with my stuff? Now, isn't that interesting? Uh, Let's just go into Revelation 9. And we're going to pull the Strongs out. And we're going to take a look at locusts. Okay? Now what it... Hmm. Hang on one second. I'm having a problem with stuff. I guess the only thing I could say is uh, the enemy doesn't want me to do this video. <laughs> Well, let's just go ahead and do it anyway. All right, so here we go. Uh, locusts. Let's take a look at these things. Now, remember now, this is going to be talking about an actual animal, an actual cricket-looking, grasshopper-looking animal, as we know what a locust is today. Uh, but what, really what I want you to see is kind of how it it acts to things. So a locust, uh, particularly a species that infests oriental countries, strips the fields and trees, and it's numberless swarms of them, okay? Um, and that is really what I wanted you to see. Now, when the Lord said um, in, Revelation, in Revelation 9, um, that they are not to harm the grass of the earth or any green thing or any tree, then this is going to be a different type of locust. But only those, men's, those men who, who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads, but only them that do not have the seal of God on their foreheads. And so I just wanted to um, make that um, uh, detail known. And they were not given the authority to kill them, but to torment them. For how long? For five months. Guys, that's almost half a year. That's almost a half a year. A half a year. Their torment was that like the torment of a scorpion when it strikes a man. And in those days, men will seek death and will not find it. They will desire to die, and death will flee from them. Okay, so let's go back to uh, the messages that we had, and let's take a look at this. So, many will wish they were dead upon this earth. This is what he said. Many will wish they were dead upon this earth. 
They are coming to barrage the earth for a time. They are allowed a time, a set time. Okay, well, uh, we're understanding what the time is for five months. We're understanding this was allowed by the Lord Jesus Christ. The key was given. Okay, we're understanding they're allowed to come down. But now they, they're restricted to what they can do. They're not going to harm the grass any green thing or any tree but only those who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads and they're not given the authority to kill them but to torment them and to torment them to such a degree that they wish they were dead okay so maybe they'll bring them up to the brink of it but not actually have them die so guys this is not this is uh this is a huge thing this is something that is just going to be uh when the lord says this is a day you're going to remember um because that is what he said here um he said it's a day you're going to remember um where is it Oh, you'll have to look for it in here. Oh, it's it's significant. One many will remember, and you will see it with your with your own eyes. And it says here, it will make you shudder, send chills past whatever you have known. These things are coming, uh, guys. He's trying to warn us, and he's trying to show us this is something significant. And when he says that this has been warned for many years now, it's right here in Scripture. That's why it's been warned for many years now. It's right here. And not only that, but some of the messengers and those seeking deeply in prayer have received this information. They know what's getting ready to come. Um, so let's take a look and see exactly what he's talking about, about the scorpion sting. Okay? Um, I pulled up just Google scorpion sting symptoms. And these are some of the symptoms of uh, what a scorpion sting may include. So intense, immediate pain lasting minutes to 24 hours, swelling, itching, and change in skin color, nausea, vomiting, anxiety, drowsiness, fainting, increased saliva, tears, sweat, numbness of the tongue, vision problems, diarrhea, or inability to control the bowels, swollen glands. And so when I went down a little bit more, I clicked on uh, the scorpion sting from uh, symptoms from Mayo Clinic. And what I did is um, I, um, I included some information here. Let me see if I can make this a little bit different so that I can get it in this way. I'm having problems with my with my box. Um, it says scorpion stings are painful but rarely life threatening. But um, but the Lord is saying this is a little bit different than a regular scorpion. Um, this is a little bit different. Let me see if I can make this a little bit smaller. Uh, worldwide, only about 30 of the estimated 1,500 species of scorpions produce venom, toxic enough to be fatal. But with millions of scorpion stings occurring each year, often in areas with a lack of access to medical care, deaths due to scorpion skins are significant public health problems in parts of Mexico. South America, North America, Middle East, and India. So when the Lord is saying that they do not have the authority to kill, um, then they have the ability. Do you understand what I'm saying? And it appears that it's a, a type of venom. Okay? It's a type of venom. And so, um, and so I, wanted to, um, I wanted to bring that to your attention. So let's continue going through... Um, uh, Revelation 9. Let's just finish this other little part. Let's see what they look like now. The shape of the locusts was like horses prepared for battle, and on their heads were crowns of something like gold, and their faces were like the faces of men, and they had, uh, and they had hair like women's hair, and they had teeth which were like lion's teeth, and they had breastplates, like breastplates of iron, 
and the sounds of their wings was like the sound of chariots with many horses running into battle and they had tails like scorpions and there were stings in their tails and their power was to hurt men five months they had and they had as king over them the angel of the bottomless pit whose name in hebrew is abaddon but in greek he has the name apollyon so i pulled up abaddon and apollyon and here's abaddon define abaddon the name for the devil or for hell okay so if it's their king then that's their king and apollyon the name for the devil and it even cross references it revelation 9 so when we hear from the lord uh, and he tells us as in the days of noah right and he's given us this information and this right here that was being downloaded into my spirit as to what they were um then this is really starting to take shape as to now why I was receiving uh, that right there. Okay, because these are the enemy army. These are those of darkness. These are those uh, that don't have the spirit of God and they're void of any good and they're emotionless and will harm without any thought. That is why I was receiving that as a download. Um, at that time and so now I'm starting to understand just a little bit more right as to where they're coming from and what they're going to look like and what all is going on but there is something else that I would like to show you because there has been a little bit of controversy uh, in regards to these actually being animals or uh, are they something else related to a different type of war so now when I pulled up just images of um, Revelation 9 locusts, you know, they, they try and match up as to the body of the horse, the hair of the woman, the teeth of the lion, um, you know, they have wings and, you know, what this could possibly look like. Um, especially this one here, a horse, wings, breastplate, hair, you know. Um, what can they possibly look like well this is coming out of the smoke this is coming uh out of the pit now some people say well you know that really sounds like it's helicopters um that have the painted things on them as far as women being painted on the front you remember the world war ii helicopters let's let's take a let's see if we can pull any of that up let's see um uh, World War II, uh, let me see, World War II, we'll, we'll do helicopters um, and see, uh, hmm. hang on, well that's not going to do it, how about we do uh, painted American helicopters, let's see what comes up there. Okay, here we go. Uh, see how some of these helicopters they have painted actually look like something. Some actually have like women's faces and hair and things like that in the front. Um, some people are saying that it could quite possibly be this what they're seeing. Um, you know, so I, I, I don't really know. I'm not going to say that that is uh, what it is. I'm going to stick very, very closely to what the Lord is telling us because they're coming up out of the pit. So the keys of hell are being opened. But now we also know that the Spirit of God can take over and it can create war. So I just want to kind of put that out there is that that is also something else that others have been um, kind of talking about as well i'm leaning more toward this um, truly because i i believe if you have war and something um, chemical or 
you know, something is dropped down that is, it's quite possible there could be um, something that could be put out uh, that could harm people, but how would it be able to distinguish between a mark and, and, and those not marked? That's my, that's my deal there. So that's my argument against the helicopters and, and people saying that it's possible of war and this and that. I, I have a feeling that it's, it's more this and, um, and not the other. Okay, so when the Lord has been uh, talking about these things to us, he keeps saying that they are things, okay? They are things. And, um, and I found that very intriguing to the point where I actually went up and started to take a look at what the definition of thing was. Because the Lord has been pointing us to um, several months ago, maybe even a year ago, it's been quite some time, where he said, um, daughter, dig into each and every word um, because there is information there. There's hidden nuggets there. And um, and so that's what um, that's what I wanted to do. Um, let me pull up uh, the definition of things. OK, guys, so what I did here is um, I, I just typed in define the word things. Um, and this is what comes up, this definition here. And it actually gives me four definitions. Let's just open it up so we can see um, all of it. Um, the first one, an object that one need not, cannot, or does not wish to give specific name to. Um, the second one, an inanimate material object as distinct from a living sentient being. Now, the synonyms for this is creature, wretch, devil. So I was kind of pulled to this particular one because of what we've already seen um, from Revelation 9, what it was showing us. And then number three, an action, activity, event, thought, or utterance. And then the fourth one, just informally, what is needed or required. And then they have a couple of more, but this is really not pointing us to um, the definition that we're interested in. I really feel like because of the synonyms for definition number two, that this is the one that we're going to want to dig into where it says creature, wretch, devil. And, um, and so what I did when I was doing my study was I clicked on each and every word that was in um, this particular definition because when you read the definition as it is an inanimate material object as distinct from a living sentient being I mean it's a matter-of-fact thing um, and it really doesn't give us a full grasp as to what we need to be looking for so what, what I did is this I just copied um, and I went up and just you know pasted it right here and went into each and every definition and as I did um, I read through the definition and then I cut and pasted out some of the uh, information in here and so inanimate it's not alive especially not in the manner of animals and humans now you can look at this word and, you know, in the sense of what we already know coming forth from our video, you can look at this word and say, well, that doesn't, it just means it's not alive. It could be anything. Yes, that's correct. But with what we've already identified, um, now this is starting to take a little bit more shape. So it's not alive, especially not in the manner of animals and humans. And that kind of ties in to what the Lord was downloading into my spirit um, when he was giving me that information. Let's, let's pull that up and just take a look at it one more time. Um, things, he called them things. And this is what I was understanding. You know, no soul, no spirit of God, void of any good, emotionless, harm with any thought. They're not people. They're not animals. They're things. Um, and so the Lord is trying to point us to that, that they are, they are dead, okay? Showing no signs of life, okay? And so what I did for each and every one of those words, like material, let's just go to the next one, um, I went right through so that I could come up with a full definition as to what this 
actually means. And when you look at material, um, and we can open up these so that you can see them all. Um, matter from which things is or can be made. Uh, substance, matter, substance. Um, it goes in and it, and it looks at all of these things. Now the Lord has told us to go through and do this. This is what He told us to do. Hopefully you guys are. Um, hopefully you guys are uh, going through and getting that done. But I do want to pull up um, what I um, was able to get from looking out of all of these. Uh, let's just let's just try and make this uh, bigger so you guys can see it. Okay. All right. Um, when I looked at the definition, now remember the definition is in red, an inanimate material object as distinct from a living sentient being. Okay, so I just wanted that to be in there. That is the actual sentence. And as I went through and dug into every single word, I want you to read now what that particular uh, definition of thing is. An inanimate inanimate, not living, especially not in the manner of animals and humans and showing no signs of life. Material, which is matter from which a thing can be made, matter or substance denoting or consisting of physical objects rather than the mind or spirit. So what does that tell you? It means we're going to be able to see them. Uh, we're going to be able to see them, okay? Um, object, a material thing that can be seen or touched, an entity. Okay, so guys, so now we're seeing this is not just a spiritual thing. This is coming into the physical, okay? As distinct, meaning recognizably different in nature from something else of a similar type. It's clear, it's well-defined, it's unmistakable, it's recognizable, it's prominent, it's striking. It's physically separate and different, unconnected, and readily distinguishable by the senses. Okay, so our senses hear, smell, taste, see, you know, we're going to know it. We're going to be able to see it, hear it, smell it, the whole nine yards. Um, now, guys, this is something that I, I do want to bring up because um, Many, many, many videos back, I had I had explained that I was visited by a demon and how I knew that demon was there. Um, immediately, I smelt I smelt um, I smelt sulfur. Um, I smelt you know when you when you strike a match that smell that sulfur smell that's what I smelled. And so the Lord God has given us the our senses to help us. Um, you know, in things, if someone cannot see very well, their their um, sense of smell is is enlightened for their protection, for their help, for their um, for making way through their life. And so, these things are given to help us. And so, um, there's going to be some things that we're going to see, see, hear, smell. Um, hopefully, none of the other senses. Uh, from a living, okay, meaning it's alive, of water perennial, perennially flowing to make one's home in a particular place. Okay, so it is different, right? Different from a living, alive water flowing to make one's home in a particular place, to reside in, inhabit, occupy, dwell. Okay, so what does that mean? When we see the word living, um, when someone has... To reside in this this is like where we have the Lord Jesus Christ residing within us the spirit residing within us um, that's how you know someone is alive they have been saved and they have been infilled by the spirit you know that they are alive um, they have the spirit of God within them they have passed from death to life right okay so these are as distinct, meaning recognizably different, from a living, sentient being, okay? Meaning there is no life. We already found out that there is no life in them, and they are recognizably different. So what's the word sentient mean? Able to perceive or, or feel things. Able to perceive or feel things. 
Now, that's very interesting because when the Lord gave me what this is, this is one of the words that he gave me, emotionless, emotionless. So the being, existing, life, living, the nature or essence of a person, soul, spirit, inner being, heart, um, these are recognizably different from a live, sentient being, from a living, flowing, indwelled with the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, able to perceive and feel things, living, essence, soul, spirit, inner being, person. So when we look at this particular definition of thing, and we go into every single one of these words, we now understand that we are talking about this is a recognizable difference between death and life. Okay? This is a recognizable difference between someone who is dead and someone who is alive. Now, I'm not talking about physically because these beings are physical right we've already learned that it is something that we're going to be able to see or touch right can be seen or touched so in the s in the in the uh, definition of being alive physically physically they are alive but spiritually they are dead okay quite different between someone who is alive, who has the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit flowing and living and indwelling within them. Okay? So I wanted to bring this to you. Um, there is more that I need to get into as well. I want to talk to you all in regards to um, defining. Um, dead and alive within within the children of God, uh, within those that are not the children of God, and within those who are the children of God. Um, I found some information from Spurgeon that I truly want to share with you, um, and I'll probably provide the link for you as well, because it's a long document, it's a long teaching that he did back in 1867, but it is uh, very much in detail. Um, and quite eye-opening, I believe. So guys, this is um, going to end then the third installment of They Are Coming. I hope that um, I hope that the study that I did, that the Lord led me on to go in to try and identify exactly what a definition of this thing is, um, is is helping open your eyes is to see exactly what they are and 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 what they are going to look like and how they are coming to be and how long we are going to be dealing with these things. Um, keep in mind that there are those who are chosen and marked that are going to be going out to um, help the Lord so help God so that um, these those that are not marked will be marked. Um, there are those that are there, and the Lord has discussed that in some of these messages as well. So guys, in, in regards to this particular document, um, I will try to cut and paste it uh, in some way, maybe, uh, and put it in the message or what have you. I'll have to figure out a way to share it um, so that you guys can have it. Um, um, and as far as the definition, if you'd like to have that as well, I can go ahead and uh, submit that to you. But guys, you saw what I did. I mean, I didn't do anything that you can't do yourself. I just put in each and every word. Um, but if we'll go back to the definition of things, the reason why I chose that one um, is because of the synonyms. Um, and that was what was tying into Revelation 9. And that's the reason why I chose that one. Okay. All right, guys, so thank you so much for coming back to, um, to another video. Um, God bless you. Um, stay safe until we are able to speak again. Bye.